So when I tell the kids on that, that exercise that their lives matter, I do the exercise where I say, um, sometimes they've done it um, in advance, so they brought it in. The idea is get a shoebox or a trunk or whatever you want and, and tell us, show us, or tell us, what are you going to leave behind? Mm -hmm. So that people know. <coughs> Now I'll ask some of you, what are you, what are you going to leave behind, Lenny? I was going to say, when you came to my class, uh, the kids were really impressed, especially when you were telling them, what do you want to leave behind that people find in uh, 50, 100 years? And they started thinking, and you know, what's important to me? And actually, what they're doing in school, I think, all of a sudden made a difference, I don't know how long term, but at least short term, that they realize whatever they're doing now matters for the future. Yeah, again, it's about planting that seed because so many of our kids go around thinking that they are nobody, that they come from a nothing people and that they don't matter and that, you know, whether it's, it's just it's, it's class, it's a lot of things. But a lot of kids really go around thinking that they don't matter and I think sometimes they think their parents don't matter. So I take issue with sometimes with certain politicians who give speeches and talk about, we need, I think the hoop dreams is, is a myth. I tell people, look, I think a lot of our kids not even dreaming hoops. But I say, it's, it's, it's not wrong to tell people you gotta become a lawyer and a doctor and all of that. I mean, I've done that, the career things and people want me to go that way. I said, some of these children, their, their parents are probably like mine, work in a garment center. Um, I'm not gonna put their parents down and say if they're a sanitation worker, that's nothing. You know, I think we need to go beyond and telling them that, you know, your lives matter. And yeah, I want to know about your father's sanitation work order, you know, seamstress. We were just doing an inquiry with the Olympic Day celebration, which is February 27th. So we did important inventions from the last 100 years. I asked the kids, what do you think was important? And one of the key things that came up was, I thought it was a sanitation truck. And I said, you don't think of it, but it's amazing. I said, what, what was life like for people before they had those things and what it would have meant? So even the simplest story. So, example, so with these kids, you know, if you work with kids and you're telling your life matters because you are making history. You living now are making history. And leave a record of yourself because it's going to matter. And I tell them, yes, in 100 years, a historian's going to want to do a book on kids in the Bronx in the 21st century. You know, so I, they, their hobbies, their music, their painting, their diaries, their homework, their school records, encouraging them. And like you said, Lenny, I think some of it will stick with them because what we basically said is you matter. Your story matters. Exactly. And it's good if you can do it and get them to bring it in because I've seen kids, I had a class once where I was warned that they were out of control, you know. Um, they were just children. And when I went around and looked at their boxes, they were angels. You know, so whatever the wild thing I was supposed to feel, these animal children, they were, they were wonderful, precious little souls who said, this was the bracelet that my best friend gave me. You know what I mean? Um, and they really got into it. And, and I could see some of them got emotional. The story I think I've told before is one girl, because it's the way with these exercises, you find out things about them. She was telling me, something that she said, this was from when she was stupid. I said, baby, you've never been stupid. What do you mean? So what she was trying to say, it was a time when she was unaware of something. And I realized, again, that so many of our children don't have language. Mm -hmm. Tilly? I think that's good. That would make a good oral history project for the average. My school participates in some type of um, social studies project across the grades. And I think that that's what we're going to do this year and have the children display their boxes, their history boxes, and have a story to go along with maybe each item. Mm -hmm. This item represents and that item represents. Because like you said, many of the kids, they, they really don't feel like they're part of history. They don't feel that they are an important piece of what's going on in the world and how their life can blossom into something. I mean, all you got to do is look at some of the people who made it in history today. What did they start out as? They were kids just like you. Mm -hmm. You know, had no idea that this was going to happen to them. So this could be very important. Somebody <coughs> might be looking at your pockets like they look in Lincoln's pockets, you know, <laughs> and finding these things. So I think that's going to be. That's no, no, I think it really, it, it really, I've seen it do a lot of good for the kids, mm -hmm. just for them, even if they don't care about history the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make them feel good about themselves, you know. Like and it also, it is how we we do history yeah. from what's left behind and, and what usually happens is 
the wealthy were always able to preserve their stuff and have the museums. Um, but you know, a lot of people poor working class, you know, your stuff wears out. <laughs> you know, so we've never been able to leave that much behind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to invite, uh, I'm going to say thank you to Tanya. Thank you.